Hello everyone, I'm Travel Kai and welcome to the EDH channel. Today's shout out is for Zuldinga. If you'd like to support the channel as well, then you can visit Patreon and donate with the link in the description below. Failing that, a like, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Now, let's have a look at everyone's opening hands. Tap length from Valdrig up against three patrons by the way, Gorgo Batman, Scotty and Valdrig. Scotty got into a soul ring on turn one. A strip mine for us, nothing to do on our turn one, so we'll just pass. Mother of Runes for Gogo. And here we go, it's the Relentless Rat deck from Scotty. Hardened scales for Valdrig. And there's a sack outlet, so yeah, a couple of things that you'll likely need for a combo. Gave is usually a combo deck. A Grey Merchant of Asphodel for us, so let's get some decent Black Devotion going and throw down the Bloodgast into the north for Kemrith, focusing on Snowlands apparently. First commander of the game, Sir Comrade the Grim, thanks to the fast mana coming down very quickly on turn 3. And we do want to get Death Loops going with this deck, so yeah, getting rid of Sir Comrade the Grim is going to be an absolute priority for us, I would think. I dare say that the same might be said for Valdrig over here. Might want to see the back of Sir Comrade the Grim as well. Marwin the Nurturer over there. So maybe looking to make a lot of elf tokens. And for us it is a Phyrexian Tower, so not quite a sack outlet, but a little bit of one at least. Maybe we can drop the Phyrexian Tower and go for getting our commander out. We'll do it at the end of Valdrig's turn, assuming that we can keep the Bloodgast in play. Font of Fertility, means of a little bit of ramp for Gogo. Another Relentless Rats. Four cards left in hand, we may well see yet another Relentless Rats. And we certainly do, so down to three cards in hand and the Rats are 4-4s four now. But decides not to swing in, he does have a 4-4 four four and a 5-4, deciding to just hold everything back. Huh, really like that card, a Juniper Order Ranger coming down for Valdrig. So all of his creatures are going to come in with plus counters, which, again, adds to the whole plus counters and making tokens, comboing off thing. They'll actually get two counters on them, thanks to the hardened scales. So at the end of Valdrig's turn, we will sacrifice the blood gas to make a couple of mana. The Sir Comrade will trigger on that. So all of us get pinged, and then we can go for our commander, which enters tapped, of course, but... It doesn't matter because we're about to untap during the beginning of our turn. Bloodgast will come back out as soon as we drop this swamp. Alright, in a desecrated tomb. So the idea is that we get into death loops where we can sacrifice creatures and get death triggers such as Pawn of Ulamog, have our commander come back out of play and kill it off again and get desecrated tomb triggers and there's all sorts of stuff we can do, obviously triggering aristocrat effects when we do that. So out comes the Bloodgast, and we have five mana available to us here if we want it. So seeing as how we can't block with Bloodgast anyway, I think we should sacrifice that, actually. Yeah, I should have got the Bloodgast down first, or the um, Blood Artist even, because I'm thinking of going Desecrated Tomb into Blood Artist. So lost a little bit of drain there. And every time we play a land... One or more creatures will leave the graveyard in blood gas, so we'll get not only the 2-1, but we'll get a bat token as well. I'd like to deal combat damage to someone here, of course, but I'm not really looking to open myself up to all this damage. I'm hoping that a 5-2 will keep Scotty from swinging in at us. 
I'm also hoping that the blood gas doesn't get exiled from our bin. At the end of our turn, Font of Fertility gains Sacrificed, search for a basic, put it in tapped. And then a Path to Exile, surprisingly, going on to the Mother of Runes, so using that as a ramp spell to fix colours, so probably going for either a red or a blue source here. No, nope, just went for more Abzan colours, so missing blue and red at the moment. Okay, and I played my Angel deck recently. I was surprised to see that deck not do so well, actually, that video. Um, but the reason I built it was because of Book of Exalted Deeds and didn't actually draw into it, unfortunately. It's not worthy that that can go on certain manlands like Mutavolt and the Snow Manland as well, which might be the reason for all this snow mana. And then you need something like a Strip Mine to get rid of that land and then they'll actually be able to lose a Sylvan Scrying. Let's see what land they search for here. We might be able to make Gogo -Go public enemy number one if, yeah, he's going for exactly that tactic that we went for in the Angel deck. So if we can get him to sacrifice this and put the counter on there, then it might make him enemy number one and everyone will be swinging in towards him. And then once his life total is down to zero or around zero, we can blow the land up. Okay, it's one rat apiece going into the red zone here, so they are still 4-4s. Four no more Relentless Rats have been played. So we will just take the hit here, I think. Ha <laughs> hey, Cathar's Crusade as well. Classically, you don't want to be playing Gave down on turn 5 or as soon as you've got 5 mana, because you want to be able to actually get some value out of him before he gets blown up. And so instead, going for Cathar's Crusade... Got a lot of pieces that he's after over there, Valdrig. Okay, so I'm not entirely disappointed to see a swamp there, because it means we can continue to hide the strip mine. So I dare say three mana will get swallowed up here, putting the counter onto the faceless heaven. So let's drop the swamp. Out comes the blood ghast again. And then that means, like I said before, that the desecrated tomb triggers, so we get a bat token when blood ghast leaves the graveyard. And now I'm wondering if I want to drop such an important combo piece in Pawn of Ulamog straight away. Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. We really need like Phyrexian Altar or something like that. The pirate that makes treasures. So that we can constantly death loop the Ebon Death. You know, missing a few pieces yet, and Pawn of Ulamog might be one of the ones that we need to keep. I'm just going to go for an early Grey Merchant of Asphodel here, I think. We'll gain a decent amount of life, and it gets a good blocker in the way as well. So we jump up to 55, taking our opponents down to not too bad a life total. And we've got some decent blockers now, so how's about we go back in? At the Relentless Rats player. We might suffer for that. They might swing in back at us full force. And they decide to go for Sorin's Thirst. So two damage to a target creature and you gain two life. Just so happens that our commander has only two toughness. So that will go and sit in the bin now. Gives us something to do next turn at least. Triggers the Blood Artist and the Sir Comrade. We will point our Blood Artist at the Sir Comrade player. Diabolic Tutor from Gogo -Go with only two cards left in hand. Obviously three after that is resolved. So they were just discussing the whole um, Book of Exalted Deeds going on to the Faceless Haven thing. So now Gogo -Go knows that our opponents know about that interaction. I'm wondering if that might have been a heroic intervention. And then at the end of the turn there, I think we milled. Yeah, we've lost an expedition map. And we have lost a vampiric tutor, so Sir Comrade triggering a few times there. Gavany Township and Loyal Guardian going down there. A couple of Relentless Rats in the bin there. And over here is a Pestilent Cauldron, as well as a Snow-Covered Forest. Just as well that the vampiric tutor went down, because Sir Comrade can mill at instant speed. And again, spreading the damage round, 4-4 four, four, Relentless Rats, swinging in one apiece. So I'm just going to hold on to the Bat Token, I'm hoping for a Tutor into a Skull Clamp or something. 
Also, we can get death triggers even on our tokens with some of our stuff in this deck. So here we go. Gave Guru of Spores does not have the extra mana that he would have needed there. But Gave comes in with an additional plus counter and then some more from the Juniper Order Ranger and then even more from the Cathars Crusade. So yeah, coming down as a 10-10 as opposed to a 5-5. And just swinging in with the Carrion Feeder, which cannot block, so that goes in towards Gogo. Okay, and another Swamp for us, so this is actually... <laughs> as much as it's not good to just keep drawing into lands, we're managing to hide the Strip Mine at least. It might be that someone goes for the one-shot on Gogo. Like, there's the rats here, there's lots of big creatures here. Yeah, and I'm just going to play around the fact that there might be a Heroic Intervention. Let's get our Commander back into play. Sacrificing the blood gas to do it, which triggers both the blood artist and Sir Conrad the Grim. And I'm going to start pointing myself towards Gogo on that front, then drop the swamp, and the blood gas will come back into play. And there we get a bat as well, of course. Argument to be made for us doing this during our opponent's turns, but that leaves a land in our hand. Because we do want to make use of the landfall with blood gas, so we'll just have to go a turn cycle of having our commander tap down. And then I will continue to show my opponents that I'm worried about Gogo -Go not being able to lose the game as well. So now Faceless Haven is becoming animated, so it will turn into an angel. And there we go. Going for the Book of Exalted Deeds. And in response to that, looks like Scotty's got something. <laughs> Destroy a target creature in response, so we managed to hold on to our strip mine and get rid of some of our opponent's removal. The good thing about the book in our Angel deck is that we can make use of it even without doing this interaction. You can still get the Angel tokens from it, but if that's your sole interaction, then it might be more difficult to predict, as we're seeing here. So now I think we can... Yeah, start to go easier on Gogo. -Go. Let's point ourselves at Valdrig now. Not worthy that the blood gas comes in with haste now that Gogo -Go is at 10 life or less. And each opponent mills a card, or each player mills a card even, thanks to Sir Comrad. And that's one of our win conditions as well, Vorpal Sword, that's a shame. I think we have... Hmm, can't remember... I think I might have put Yorgmoth's Will in this deck, so we might be able to grab that back. It's only one mana to play out of the bin, of course. But the plan is with this to just store up 11 mana. And then drop it down, equip it and activate it all in one turn on our commander. Or one of our other evasive creatures. A bloodthirsty aerialist. Wasn't expecting to see that one, but I suppose if you can put infinite plus counters on it somehow. Probably by giving this lifelink. I don't know, at the very least, it's an evasive creature that will slowly get bigger, assuming that you've got some means of life gain. Okay, so Go Go being finished off by Relentless Rats and Sir Comrade. And then, okay, and not doing that for some reason. Uh, wanting to hold a blocker back, maybe. Should encourage Valdrig to go in at Go Go as well. So it's one Relentless Rats apiece, and one is being blocked by the Gave. We will take another hit, I think, because we're still at a decent life total. So a Relentless Rats goes down. That will... Yeah, we'll put that onto Gogo. -Go. I do want to encourage Valdrig to take Gogo -Go out here. Because the longer any player is left in the game, the longer they can have to interfere with the game. And I felt like if I pointed my Aristocrat stuff at Valdrig, he might be more willing to gang up on me with Gogo, -Go, maybe. Alright, looks like we've all gone for pinging effects, so a Blood Artist is coming down for Valdrig here. Which won't quite keep him alive against an infinite loop, thanks to Sir Comrade cancelling out my Blood Artist. Anyway, enters, puts plus counters on itself and the Juniper Order Ranger and everything else, thanks to Cathar's Crusade. And we are really desperate for some kind of sack outlet at this point, amongst other things. Alright, so the carrion feeder swings in towards us, that is 5 damage, the 
what is that, a 10-12 Juniper Order Ranger goes in towards Scotty, so maybe Val is just assuming that Gogo will go down to the Aristocrat stuff, which is probably a safe bet. I think we are just going to take this as well. Argument to be made for blocking it because a bunch of plus counters could go on all the team by removing them from Gave and making a bunch of saprolings, but uh, he's got five, six, seven mana there if he wanted to do that. But luckily for us decides not to do that, so we only go down to 38. A bloodthirsty aerialist was blocking the Juniper Order Ranger, so that goes down, triggers the Blood Artists and the Sir Comrade. So I'm going to point my Blood Artist at Gogo, -Go and I'll probably just swing the Blood Ghast in it there as well, before sacrificing it, assuming that we want to do that. Valdrig's Blood Artist was pointed at Scotty, by the way. And I was just going to say it'd be funny if we drew into yet another land, but... Drawing to another land we do, so... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that... Maybe Scotty will want to wipe the board. I'm not entirely sure anyone will want to wipe the board here, so it might just be worth throwing down the Pawn of Ulamog. So, uh, let's get rid of Gogo, -Go, first of all. So, down he goes, being bullied out of the game because he showed us all his combo there and in response looks like Scotty is doing something each player mills a card so I'm assuming that he doesn't have anything oh and that hurts seeing the back of the Urza's incubator would really have liked to have drawn that because that means that it only costs two black to get our commander out of the bin and it makes it much easier to combo off with uh, yeah anyway no creatures were milled there, so leaves Gogo in play. But luckily we're about to hit for two. So down he goes, and now it's a case of trying to get rid of Valdrig before he combos off with something. Maybe should have swung in with the Ebb and Death in at Valdrig there. I think we're going to generate enough chump blockers here, so probably should have done that in hindsight. Sacrifice the Bloodgast, and I'll start pointing mine at Valdrig. No, oh, and actually another mistake, should have come for the Pawn of Ulamog first, because we could have got a an Eldrazi spawn there. Oh well. Play the Swamp, out comes the Bloodgast again. And that makes yet another Bat token, and we'll just go all out. I think we'll go for Pawn of Ulamog and for the Zulaport Cutthroat as well, so it makes board wipes a lot riskier. So like I said, we should have had an Eldrazi spawn here, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Might do actually, because we could have sacrificed the Eldrazi spawn for mana, floated it, and then used the three to get our Ebb and Death back from the bin. Well, we'll see what happens. A Cauldron of Eternity now, which only costs four mana I think. When a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. You can pay two life, tap, and three. Return a creature card from graveyard to the battlefield, only as a sorcery. So that is consistent, Relentless Rats, by the looks of it. Unfortunately, they are a mana short of that, I think. Now, Eye Collector. When it deals combat damage to a player, each player mills a card. Alright, here we go, starting to make Sapraling tokens, so Juniper Order Ranger and Cathar's Crusade coming into play. <laughs> it's funny, in one of the last videos we had lots of board wipes and it made it drag on for a long time, and in this game we haven't seen a single board wipe, it's one extreme to the other. It's good to mix things up though, because it means that we actually get to see our decks in action. So the Sapralings are coming down with four plus counters, making them five fives. And each one that comes down is going to buff Marwyn even more, which means she can tap down for more mana. Although tapping down in response to the triggers here, she'll probably let those resolve first. Then she'll tap for more mana. Okay, but instead just going for the 7 mana. And no doubt going to remove 7 plus counters from things and make saprolings. Alright, so with all the mana used up, we go around to Valdrig's turn. There are 8 19 19 Saprolings, uh, a 21 21 Saproling, and then a bunch of other huge creatures. This will tap down for 23 mana as it stands now. So I'm pretty sure that our opponent will be able to go wide on us here. 
All right, so let's see attacks. Carrion Feeder, a 23-23, comes in at us. A 43-45 comes in at us. The 25-25 Commander. 21-22 Blood Artist. We get a 21-21 Sapraling. A couple of 19-19 Sapralings. And then there are six 19-19 Saps going in towards Scotty. Uh, the problem is with all the mana from Marwyn, Valdry could probably take us out with the Blood Artist making a bunch of tokens and sacrificing them and doing all that jazz, so we're probably done for here anyway. But let's make some chumps regardless. So chump blocking like that, trying to leave the Blood Artist in play as well as the Pawn of Ulamog. Can't block with the Blood Ghast. So hopefully we'll still be able to get Ebon Death out at the end of the turn because the Pawn of Ulamog will make some spawn tokens here. Might see the back of Scotty, I don't know if he's got enough blockers to chump with. And then it is Inspiring Call, so draw a card for each creature you control with a plus counter on it, and they gain Indestructible. Um, I mean, what's that, about 10 roughly? So Val with 20 mana from the Marwyn during the blocking step, which is good. So that mana should fizzle. Won't be able to do as much Aristocrat shenanigans, or not take us by surprise with it at least. Has to do it here, if he's not going to lose that mana. Uh, 17 cards in hand. And starting to create Saprilling tokens from the Gave. Okay, so he's past priority there with a bunch of mana floating. I don't know what his aim was there. Maybe just buffing the Saprilings up more to make sure to get rid of Scotty. Which he does, knocking him down to minus 17. Our life total remains the same. And we get a bunch of Blood Artist triggers, which basically counter each other out. Zulaport Cutthroat will trigger as well as the Pawn of Ulamog. Alright, and with all the Aristocrat stuff in play, I think that was going to be our only means of trying to get out of this game. Unscathed would be Zulaput Cutthroat is 2, 4, 6 and 7, knocking him down to 3 and then hit him with our commander for the victory but Teferi's Protection pretty much seals it I think. They could have got a couple of Blood Artist triggers themselves by making more plus counters by sacrificing a couple of Saprilings but I don't think that would have been enough and we would have got a couple more triggers by sacrificing Galdrazi Spawn, we'll just do that here. And then we can go for our commander. I really don't see what we can do at this point. So it's round to our turn. Let's watch us draw into another swamp. <laughs> okay, Olga Slumlord. Uh, well, we can drop the strip mine now. Just throw down the Olga Slumlord for the fun of it. So we've got all the, well, nearly all the pieces that we need. We just, you know, we're missing a real sack outlet, basically. Uh, need the pirate, Ashnod's altar. Uh, Phyrexian Altar would be the best thing. But you get a rough idea of what we want to do with this deck. Okay, and it's a Champion of Lamholt. So they will only need that to have uh, 5 power, which should be easy enough. Until it just comes straight in as a 5-5, five five, so all this stuff is now unblockable. I think it cares about our power and toughness, doesn't it? Creatures with power less than Champion of Lampart's power, so yeah, it would actually need to be 6 power to not be blocked by this. And then they are creating a Sapraling token. So the Champion of Lampart now a 9-9, nine nine, and yeah, just making sure that we can't block with anything. So turning in sideways, and let's see if we get into... Well, we'll definitely get into triple digits. See if we get into 4. I don't think there's quite enough damage for that. No, not quite. Get us down to minus 456 life and 35 points of commander damage. So there we go. That's what happens when you don't get into any board wipes or removal. But it's good to have a nice change of pace once in a while. Saw a little bit of what we want to do in our deck. Like I said, it's just death loops and um, either aristocrat wins or making infinite tokens and swinging in for lethal. Things along those lines. Saw a little bit of it, but it didn't quite pan out for us this time. Hopefully you all enjoyed that one. Be sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. Big thank you to the patrons, Gogo, Scotty and Valdrig. 
I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.